All right, let's continue with the UEFI development here. I changed my audio and recording settings a little bit again. Hopefully it's similar or better quality. We'll see. <laughs> I tried to be more legible and compress the uh, dynamic range audio-wise a bit from redoing that. So anyway, that has nothing to do with this stuff. I want to try to get the console inputs. We'll get that up and running, I think, for the simple text input protocol. We'll get keys from the user, maybe print them out. Maybe we'll fix this to do here since we have hex printing now. <laughs> I don't want to print out like a little menu of, well, both the current text mode info as we're already doing and also a sort of a table of available text modes. And then we can get input from the user and choose a different mode to run with, right? It'll switch, print everything out again. And we can see if we like that or change the mode again, just to see what's out there. And maybe in the future we can do like a little menu thing for choosing the graphics mode as well. Just one for each, compare and contrast that, that sort of deal. So I'm going to go with that today, see how far we get. Current text mode, I'm just going to put, um, change the text here a little bit. Text mode information, we'll say. And we'll print out stuff after this point, after all of that. Yeah, print available modes. So this while I want to get a key from the user. But let's go ahead and print all the available modes first. And since I am using system table here, I also want to remove that, but I can get an image handle if I want to use that as well. Let's say we have a global variable just to get that out of the way. We'll say we have, is it handle? Yes. Let's say image. It is the image handle, so we'll just do that. And it's not a pointer or anything. I think, yeah, implicitly that's a void pointer, but the type is a handle, and that's all right. I think it is a, a pointer there, so I'll just set it that, set it to there. Say image will equal, we'll have to pass those in. That is all right. Just so these variables and what they point to are available outside of this main function globally. Yeah, that's the whole point here. Image equals image handle, but we have to pass that in. So we'll just go handle, and we'll have it be handle. All right. And it still works and compiles, that's good. That's always good. Just like me forgetting to put it in the background every time. Okay, so I want to print something for all the available text modes and then have it sort of reprint each time we reload, let's say, the screen. So I want to print all this info out, and if we choose an input to switch the text mode, I want to print it out again, just to check for any changes. I don't think an emulation will have any changes, the text size won't change or anything, but on hardware it can. So that's where we would be able to, to really see and test, but... Okay, so I'm getting all the info here, let's wrap all of, all of this inside of a loop, we'll say. And if they choose the switch, we can switch. If they choose to, maybe we'll add shutdown, we can add that reset or shutdown support on like a key press, and then we can exit. So we'll have like a little screen loop here. Um, testing is fine. I might, since I know these work, I'll probably remove these. Don't need to test anymore. We'll clear it and then we'll print this stuff. All right. So let's have an overall loop here. I'll call it a screen loop or a menu loop. We'll say, and we'll put all of this inside of there. So right now we'll do while one, but we can have running or while quits, or we can have something leave the loop down here. Uh, we might be able to do that. Let's say we have a say we have a variable. I think I have standard bool with an efi.h. If we want to have like a yeah, I do. A running thing or quit or whatever. So while not quit or while running, I'll just do running. Default that for true. Kind of like a simple game loop, if you will. And then we'll have a condition to set it to false, and that will leave the loop when it goes on again. So then we don't have to do this infinite loop down here. Technically, it'll be an infinite loop, but that's all right. So I'll print the info, then I'll get a keystroke. So I'll print other text mode info, get keystroke from user, and then we'll, you know, process that. So we'll do these things here. And if one of those happens to be quit, then we'll quit. So let's print other info. So how would we do that? We need to use stuff like query mode and set mode. Yeah, I have query mode here. 
And that would be a function from C out, I believe. Yeah, our simple text, simple text output protocol, so we can do that. All right. So we have our current mode, which could be zero, might not be zero, but we know how, however many modes we have from this max mode attribute. So we can use that number in a loop. So let's say, I think it's a, I think it's a uint n, I don't remember exactly. We can look, have it up here. It's a uint 32, okay, Never mind. <laughs> So I can be less than C out mode, max mode. Although if you want to have better code generation, I think you shouldn't just dereference things and just save this out, right? So we'll say max equals this, a little bit more lines of code, but that's all right. So we'll print other info for that. So we'll want to call query mode here. For each one of these modes, which I is going to hold the, mo the mode number. So we call query mode. Query mode takes this as an implicit parameter, takes in the number, which will be i. i is a uint n. That's why I wanted to use uint n. So let's do that actually. This will always be true, so let me do that cast our problems away. That's UEFI's fault for making them different types. <laughs> um, then columns and rows will get us numbers. We have max calls and max rows, so we can use those values there. All right, so that's query mode. Set mode will be when we actually get something. Let me just put that down here. It'll be under process keystroke somewhere, just so I don't have to bring that window up again in the future. That'll be later on. Okay, so we query the mode, we wanna get the info for it. It won't give us all of this unless we set it, right? But that's okay. It's so available text modes, we'll query, and let me print something out before then. I wanna call that first probably. <laughs> we'll say, what do we have? I'll say mode number. We'll have the mode number, which would be, we'll say a D. It's U and N, but that's fine. It won't be over the, you know, signed max, right, for negative numbers. So this will always be a positive number. It'll be pretty low. I'm, I'm only expecting maybe up to like 10 text modes total on hardware or an emulation. So there won't be that many to keep track of. So this, having it be an int is fine, even though this is U and um, And then this gives us just columns and rows. So I'll say... Um, X or D, X, D, I guess. And that'll be the columns and the row number. And then we'll print one per line. So that should be all right. Uh, we do want to do carriage return and line feed because they work differently. Otherwise, it'll just print staggered like a, a staircase, <laughs> stair step on the screen. So query the next mode, just print it out, and we'll see what that does. See how far we get with that. Okay, prints everything repeatedly and then stops, which is kind of what I expected. I kind of want it to not do that. I mean, infinite loop isn't great, so that's kind of what happens. So let me add an, an inner loop just so we don't keep printing forever. <laughs> just want to see what it looks like to begin with. All right. So I don't think I got the right, uh, or I'm not doing the right thing here, obviously. We're getting giant numbers for no reason. <laughs> the mode numbers probably aren't quite correct either. So that's good. It's always good to know I mess up immediately, and that's always fun. Maybe uint n isn't the best thing to do here. I could change this back to int32. Probably would be better, although I is different, but uh, hmm. yeah, we'll see. We'll see what that does. Nope, gives the same result. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, it's because I'm not printing anything here. Wow, why do I not get issues when the compiler doesn't know that I'm really tired and need more coffee? Why do I, why does it not print info?
it should say error you stupid idiot you need to pass more stuff to this function but you know this is my built-in printf not the actual libraries libraries printf because we don't have ellipsy because we're in a freestanding environment i'm surprised that worked to begin with and i didn't get like crashing and burning but yeah i wanted to put in the mode number the columns and rows man if this is how it's gonna go i don't know if i need to record something today <laughs> oh it's okay baby steps Available modes. Hey, mode 0, 80 by 25. Mode 1 looks to be invalid, 0 by 0. 2, 3, and 4, 100 by 31, 128, 160 by 42. Generally, that's what I thought it would default to, since that would take up most or all of the screen, as we can get. That should correspond to however big our default sort of graphics mode is set to. But it doesn't, but that's all right. That's somewhere. We got somewhere with that, so that's good. Okay, so what I'm going to do also is move the clear screen in to the loop so that it resets and redraws the whole screen every time instead of continuously scrolling down infinitely. So if I take out this infinite loop here, it's going to use more resources, but it should just redraw all the info every time because it'll restart by clearing the screen. It'll restart in the top left at zero, zero and print all the info again. So that'll be a lot more resources and it'll be flickering because it's drawing as fast as it can. So not great, but... That does work. So, okay, how do we fix that? Let's get a keystroke from the user. I'm going to do the simple text input protocol. To be able to use that, I have to define that first. So, it's not defined, so let's go ahead and do that. Get rid of the void underneath that I had before as a placeholder. And we'll put it down here. Let's see, we'll say input protocol. And it'll be like how I did the output protocol where I defined it as itself. Because the functions will refer to the protocol and the protocol refers to the functions and we'll have some issues with circular dependencies there if I don't do that. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so we'll lay that out there. Let me move this back so I have this stuff available. And I'll go to input. We'll just define it here. So it's not bad. It only has reset, read keystroke, and wait for key. So that's not too bad. And they define it with an underscore. Maybe that helps. If they define it with an underscore and then the actual name, maybe you don't need to type diff it to itself. That would be probably true, to be honest, but. I haven't done C enough, believe it or not, to know whether that's true or not. I should test it out and not be uh, floundering right now, wondering if it's true, but that's okay. So we'll have a few functions here. These are all going to be functions. And I'll probably do all of them, just because resetting would probably be good to do on hardware when we load up to begin with, just in case. And we'll use wait for key to get a keystroke event happening which we'll have to define what an event is if I don't have it already. That might be under the data types. Yeah, okay, it's a void pointer. So that's just the pointer to an abstract thing that can happen that you can add to queues, like in an array, an event list, if you will. And you can tell the firmware, hey, I want you to wait for the events in this list. One of those can be an input event, such as waiting for a key. So we can make a queue of events to wait for in a busy loop so we don't have to have like an infinite while loop that goes as fast as possible. We can tell the firmware, hey, I have these events I want to read from. And you can let me know when you discover one of those. Like when the user presses a key, we'll get a key event. And we can look for that by setting this event inside of a, a list or an array and, and do that. But that's getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let me go and do these things first. They should just be right underneath if I don't scroll past it. So we'll have reset functions here. And let me put this where it was, 12.3.1. Just put the section number there. Okay. All right, so this just, this just resets the input here. Let me just copy that there.
pretty much all of these protocols are going to have the this parameter. But we don't really need to mess with extended verification. We can just put like a false for that, a null for that. But that'll reset everything. Hopefully. Extended verification. We should check if it does success or error. I just want to get something functional. I will put in errors eventually. I want to get like a basic thing for input and output working first before I move on to that. Uh, read keystroke, pretty simple as well. Out EFI input key. So we get a pointer to an input key, but what is that defined as? It's defined right below. It is a struct. If my face is covering that, let me move it up. It's just a struct with a 16-bit int for the scan code and a 16-bit int effectively as well for the character in Unicode. So a char 16, yeah. And some keys will not return the Unicode character, such as a white space. Like the enter key won't return anything for Unicode. It will. It should return a scan code of, um, of D of 12 for carriage return, but it shouldn't return a Unicode character. Because there's nothing to print. <laughs> but that'll be returned. If I input key, that'll be returned as a pointer. So we have to instantiate one and send the address to it when we want to read a key and that's all right. So other than that, we just have an event that we can use to wait for a keystroke. But let me just do this first in a busy loop. And we don't need to worry about standard error. I can do this first in a busy loop and we can check some results that we get. Maybe we'll do that. So let me move this back for now. And we have simple text input protocol, so we should be able to do CN. If I actually, because I did put that in, yep, con n is set. So we should be able to do this now. Console input. Okay, so we have CN now. So CN, we should be able to read a keystroke. Because I just labeled that CN, and we need a key. So we'll do EFI input key, call it key, give the address to that. And we'd be able to interrogate that for those values of the scan code and the Unicode character. So we can do that. We can get this and print the info just right now and see what happens. Um, but we'll need to get a keystroke first. So I'm going to do it the bad way first, and then we'll get and do a better way. So we'll say while this, it'll return a status. So while it doesn't return success, I'm going to keep trying to get the key. And that's what this will do effectively. So this is bad. It's a busy loop, but we'll wait till we get a successful keystroke. If we never do, then we'll have a, a busy loop forever. But we'll wait till we get a keystroke and to process that. Right now, I'm just going to print out the info. just to make sure we're getting stuff from the keyboard. Uh, so let's do that. And then it'll write everything again. Well, it won't print this out because it'll erase it and print everything again, won't it? <laughs> so that won't be good. So let me, it'll be a little jank, but let me print that first, I guess. Well, it's not success, do nothing. Well, we could print it. We can print it and then do another infinite loop. So, and then I'll just take out the info. Yeah, I'll just do this temporarily. So let's say we have the Unicode character and the scan code. So let's say scan code. Um, I'll print hex, I guess, for these. And we'll have Unicode character. Um, that can be a string. Probably can be a string. And then I'll make a little thing here. We'll have a character buffer, which I give a different name every time when I do this. But that's all right. And I'll make the second one equal to a null. So if we print it as a string, it'll stop printing at the null. Okay. So 
So C buff zero can equal the keystroke that we get. And that'll be the Unicode. Well, actually, we can just print it out here. No, but that would only be one character. Yeah, yeah. So that'll be the Unicode character. Okay, we'll do that. And we'll do key dot scan code. And we'll do C buff to print out the character as a string from a buffer. Okay. And we'll do infinite loop. So what this should do is get a keystroke, print out the info, and then stop and do nothing. Assuming I type things in right, which I don't. Simple text input have anonymous struct. I didn't give a name to the struct. That makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. I always do forget to do that. I have to name it here. I thought it's at 210. Never mind. It's here. Oh, simple input protocol. Yeah, simple text. Yep, there we go. Okay, scan code needs an uppercase C because I copied things verbatim. That's all right. Uppercase C and that's an argument one from incompatible type. It needs a U because these printfs work with char 16t types. So I need a char 16t literal. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so it's not printing anything because I haven't gotten a keystroke, but once I press something, it gets the key and then it does nothing. So I forgot I can go full screen with control, um, control alt F. So maybe I should have been doing that this whole time. But anyway, <laughs> I have a full screen key. I keep forgetting, sorry. But I pressed an F, so it says I have a zero for the scan code. Maybe that's correct, maybe that's not, but the Unicode character is F. So I'm gonna exit from this. I'll run it again. This time I'm going to press enter. Does not give me a scan code. So I don't know what gives me a scan code or if I'm doing it wrong. Probably doing it wrong, to be honest with you. But it should read into the key here and return. Maybe some things just don't have uh, scan codes. I don't know. It's a uint 16. This is a uint 16. Oh, well, I know the key buff works, so that's good. Um, but if you want to do that on your own, you can print out info. I'll probably put that back in a loop later. Right now, I just don't care. So let me do that. Okay, that's the bad way of getting a key, because it's just a busy loop effectively until it comes back. The good way is having a sort of event loop in which one of the events is the wait for key event available in the simple text input protocol struct, right? So I'm going to have another function just to abstract it a little bit as well. And I'll probably end up moving some of these into a different header file, because I don't need these like helper functions cluttering up everything. I'll make like a helper functions file or library file or something might do that. Okay. But right now we'll just say I get a key first and not print random stuff. That's still in my keyboard buffer. Let's do that. Let's get a key, get key from user. We'll say, um, we can call it a bool or just a void right now is fine. I guess we have our own void types in UEFI. We'll call it get key or get keystroke and get key is fine. So this, I can either return something. Well, we could return a key, actually. Let's do that. EFI input key. That makes more sense. Then we can say we don't take anything. Don't take crap from nobody. No, we can. Eh, we can do that. So I have input key. Key, this can equal get key effectively instead of doing this. Abstract that a little bit. So right now we can do this. It doesn't take in a key, though. Um, So right now we can do this and return and then do the same thing effectively, right? And go to the bottom. <laughs> uh, let me do something like... We'll do this. Just to see that when I press a key, I just want to increment a, a counter just to prove that it's working right quick. I don't need to print a new line, really. It doesn't matter here. We'll do that. Okay. Well, 
And 32 for the percent D type right now. Okay. And it doesn't like me doing that, but. Oh, I almost saw something. I don't see anything. I like when I can't do anything correctly. It's very nice. <laughs> so get a key should wait till I get a key. I'm not returning anything. Wow, I'm really stupid. I'm not thinking at all. I knew in my mind that I wanted to do that, but I didn't write it down on the keyboard and input it to my screen. Okay, return the key that you get from reading the keystroke. Then maybe it'll work and you'll have the keystroke. Although it says unused variable, so probably not. 221. I mean, I'm not doing anything with it, but this should print down a line. This should print a count. I guess it does reset it every time, doesn't it? Yeah, I should do that beforehand. Because after I get a key, it's going to redraw the screen. I keep forgetting. Not doing my display loops very well. There we go. <laughs> Not doing my display loops very well, but I'm just pressing a key and it's incrementing and drawing again. Just to prove that we're getting that. Okay. That down a line as well first. All right, so a better way of doing this is having an event loop, so let me do that. So we have EFI event, right? That is a thing we can do. So plausibly, that's just a void pointer, right? Inside of EFI.h. Didn't want to do that. The event is just a void pointer, yes. So we can have an event or EV or whatever you want to call it. We can have an array of these. Right now, we don't really need to do that because we only have one event, but plausibly, we could have an array with one or more items. And this is just the singular pointer that looks weird right now. Uh, but the reason I'm doing this is so that we can set up an event, right? So events zero can be the wait for key event. From, their, from our simple input text protocol. So this is a protocol talking for a console input from a keyboard, we'll say, in the firmware of our emulated machine or our real machine. So we have an event for taking in a, taking in a key from the keyboard, so to speak, in this case. So I'm gonna add that event to an event queue or a list, if you will. A little over-engineered for this small example, but it helps for later things if we wanna deal with more events. And what we can do with that is something else. Not go to there. <laughs> Something else in here for events. And I think it's probably not where I'm looking at. <laughs> I have to go find it because I forget where exactly it's at in the specs. So let me go find it first. Yeah, okay. Under boot services, event timer task priority. We don't need to create it, but we can do a wait for event. Ooh, now that looks nice. So we'll probably need to set up boot services, but we have a wait for event function here we can call from boot services, given a number of events, given the start of those events, and when it returns, it'll return an index of the event that was signaled within this number of events array here pointed to by this, right? If that makes sense. So I'll move that back over. Go to here. Do I have that defined down here? I don't have boot services defined. I will have to do that. So I will have to define boot services first. I forgot about that, so I'll do that. And I'll set that up within here as well. If I boot services. And I'll set that up just because I'm going to forget to do that if I don't do that now. <laughs> okay. So I do need to set up boot services. I can do that. That is going to be from the system table. We have the boot services table. Let me look at that. We have a lot of stuff in here. Which is not great, but it is what it is. I will put it below the header. Four dot four dot one. Probably don't need to put this every time, but I like doing that. 
All right, so I'm just going to copy this thing here pretty much. So it's going to be boring. I'll skip ahead. But it contains just all the boot services that are defined in the spec in the later chapters. We have task priority. We can raise or restore task priority levels. So we can have a sort of stack or queuing system for tasks, plausibly, I think, if I'm reading that right. Uh, memory services will come into play later, of course. It's very helpful and needed to get a memory map before exiting boot services and loading an operating system, we'll say. And also, we'll have several things we want to allocate and free memory for. So you can do that a couple of ways, with allocating and freeing pages or with a pool of memory. Events and timers, which I'm setting up now, wait for event specifically, but we can also have timers that signal events when the timer goes off. And we can make our own custom events if we want as well, and signal them when we want as well, as well as check if they've been fired off. Uh, we have protocol handlers. We won't be doing this. I'm not writing firmware drivers. Registering locate handle can come into play, definitely, and device path. We won't be installing the configuration table, but locate handle is handy. It can return a device handle that supports or has a certain protocol attached to it, so that'll come into play later. And if you want to load your own other EFI programs, you can do that from boot services. Exit is vital because you need to call this to actually exit UEFI and load an operating system or a further application that isn't part of the EFI world. Uh, watchdog timer I might have to mess with because I think this is set by default and your computer will shut down or reset when this goes off. I think the default is five minutes or so. I will have to remember to look at that. Uh, connect controller may come up for some things if we need to look at that and connect like device handles to a protocol that's not fully set up, such as a mouse. Sometimes that's come up for me. You can open and close certain protocols later. Um, we have locating a buffer of handles at once for a protocol. That is nice, as well as a protocol. Different ways of handling handles in protocol services. Uh, UEFI has its own CRC32. If you don't want to write your own, it has its own MIM copy and MIM set as well, if you don't want to write your own. And create event EX. I may write my own, but anyway, I'm just going to copy this stuff and I'll be back when I'm done with that. All right, we're back. I got the boot services table laid out here as it has it in the spec. I put void pointers for everything I'm not using because all of these in the boot services table other than the header, all of these are going to be functions. And a void pointer is the same size as a function pointer. And I don't want to implement them and have things say, oh, it's not right. We, we don't need to lay out definitions if we just make them void pointers. So I laid that out at the top as well. Yeah. And I just added more info. It ensures they take up the same amount of space so the functions work correctly and are at the correct offsets. So the, I'll say, so the actually defined functions <laughs> work correctly and are at the correct offsets. So just for info there, if it looks weird because the spec doesn't have void pointers everywhere, it's because I have not implemented them, except for one thing here. If I wait for events, I don't have that written, but I do want to implement that. So I will do that. They don't have it there, but that's all right. I'll go back to down here, 715. And I clicked a little bit too low, but that's all right. We'll do wait for events here. I kind of want these things to roughly follow the spec in my EFI.h file, roughly, not exactly, but that's okay. And this is in 715, okay. And again, everything's going to be pretty much the same here for all of these functions, type def, EFI status, EFI API, pointer, this something, wait for events. So this takes in the number of events as a uint n. Takes in an event itself, an abstract, it's just a void pointer. So if you've done SDL, I mean, SDL has an actual struct, I think, for events, but this is just a pointer that's filled out so the hardware can implement whatever it wants to do for an event. It's not a specifically named and defined thing. It could be just an int, it could be nothing, <laughs> who knows. Then we have an index. So this will return the index of the event within the, in within the event uh, array, we'll say, the event list. Yeah, the event array. 
So an array of type EFI event, which it defines as a void pointer. Uh, create event we can create. We can go here though to create event because it'll have it down here, type def void pointer. So the different event types we can have are these. So if you want to have stuff you check in the event, but you can have timer, runtime, notify wait, notify signal, exit boot services signal, or change to a virtual address. You can read up on that if you want. I'm not going to worry about it. Let me go back where I was, which was at create event. I want to go back where I was. There we go. Jump list was not working. So the index, though, the index is the pointer to the index of the event, which satisfied the wait condition. So if we have an array of events, I can get key here. And I'll, I'll change this probably to not use an array. This is just if you want to know how to use an array for this. We'll have an array of events. Right now, there's only one event in the array. It is the wait for key event. We want to call wait for event. And since I set up this BS, we should be able to do that. So wait for event. And we need to give it the number of events. So basically the size of the array. Um, it doesn't say it can't be a constant. It's not a pointer. So I'll just say we have one event we're going to wait for. That event is the wait for key event. But we need to give it the whole array. So let's give it the events array itself. Or we can give it the address to the first one. These would both be equivalent, but I can probably just send the events array itself. And the index needs to be a value, so we'll have uint in index. That's fine. I'll init, init that to zero, and that is a pointer. So we wait for the event. So instead of doing this, what we can say is whenever this returns, because this will go into like a wait loop when it calls it, whenever this returns, I'll put that off for now, uh, we'll, we'll have returned an index. And right now the, the index can only be zero, but I'll check for it anyway, I guess. But when that returns, if index is zero, then the first event was fired off when this returned. And that means we have a keystroke. And we don't have to wait. Well, we can just read the keystroke. Since we gave it the wait for key event, when the wait for key is fired, this was waiting for a key inside the event loop, effectively. We know we have a key event when this returns and the index is zero because that's in the first index of the array. So if we know we got a keystroke, we have to read that in. It doesn't read it for you, but we know that we got one. So we don't have to just wait in a busy loop. We can go, okay, we got a keystroke. Let's read it. We can read that in. We'll know it'll be success because we got a keystroke, um, although we could check it regardless. And if we did that, we'll return the key. If for some reason we don't get this, um, I mean, we can return a key regardless, I guess. I'll just return, I'll, I'll return key regardless, but we would want to return the actual data here. <laughs> um, I should set up memset to initialize this. I guess right now I'll initialize this. Just the zeros on both. Yeah, we'll do that right now, but we'll get in a, we'll get an event here. Have an event loop and read from it. And we'll see if that works. So we probably should, I guess, recheck again that we get the key info. That would probably be good. <laughs> That's why I saved that there. Instead of having an account, I guess I'll put that back. So this will only show up after we get a key in return, but that's all right. So let's see what that does. I did have some mistakes here, so I'll have to fix these. Incompatible types, so BS boot sector invalid type because that is um, a struct and we're given a pointer to boot services from the system table at the bottom, right? Yeah, this is a pointer. So we need to make that a pointer and then do that. Okay, key is undeclared down here because I don't have a key, that's true. We have to get a key from doing this right here. Can't use it before it's defined. That would be an error. So that is true. Okay. So let's, um, I guess I'll zoom in first. Before I get a key, I'll zoom in so it doesn't print anything yet. But that is very annoying. 
But if I if I went full screen, it would count as a keystroke. So I want to do that first. So I'll press G, um, and nothing happened. Oh, something's happening. It's not printing correctly. Oh, I always mess everything up. This prints first, doesn't it? Should get a key. It should print whatever key we got, and then it overwrites it every time. That's true. Okay, how do I write this so it doesn't overwrite my info every time? <laughs> I guess I need to process the keystroke and get another key and then print it. Well, I could do that. If I end it with... Um, let's start this with a new line. If I end this with a carriage return, it'll print and then go back to the start so that the next thing that prints will overwrite it. Yeah, that'd be good. Let me end this with a double new line, we'll say. Uh, go back. Just put another one there. So this will be on its own isolated line. So it'll print, go back to the start. So the next one will print. Process keystroke. Let's say right now, if key dot unicode char, let's say does not equal, I don't know, Q or something. We'll say, we'll say Q is quit right now, or we can make it escape, but I'll say Q is quit. So if it's not equal to Q, let's keep getting keystrokes from the user. Let's do that. I'll have a little inner loop here. Not really great, but that's all right. We could also put the condition within here, which I probably should do instead, but that's all right. Let's say, well, I'll reverse the condition. Then if it equals Q, we'll break out of this loop and we'll go and reprint everything. If it doesn't equal Q, then we'll keep getting keys and we'll print the info. So I guess I'll do that. Let's say until done. So it won't print the Q info. <laughs> if we press a Q, it won't print. We got a Q, it'll go on and redraw the screen. But that's probably okay. I didn't save. All right, there we go. So I forgot, I should full screen. So I press an F, we get an F, G, H, I, J, K, L. So we can print out keys now and get keystrokes, so that's always nice. Scan code does work, I pressed escape, so it looks like escape gives me 23 for some reason. I think that's a that's a UEFI specific thing, not a ANSI scan code thing, that's just the, U, the UEFI code for escape is 17 for some reason, that's defined in the spec, we can look at that. There's tilde, enter doesn't do anything, which is interesting. Shift doesn't do anything except for sticky keys, which can F off. Uh, that's a space. It could be that my scan code is also wrong because of how, you know, we're sending an int 32 sometimes, a uint 16 sometimes, but at least the Unicode character kind of works. And if I hold down shift, it does return the shifted version. So that's nice. But you can mess with that if you want. It's just showing that we can get keystrokes and enter them in and technically process them at some level. Oh yeah, I can test if the Q works right, duh. I should do that. <laughs> so press F, press Q, it redraws the screen, okay. All right, so what else can we do with that? I wonder, I mean, we can take in a thing and print stuff to screen. Maybe I'll do that on the next video. I thought I was gonna do that on this one, but it's taken me a while. We can do reset shutdown if we want. That would require, I think, runtime services. We are printing the modes out. I guess I'll get I'll get modes instead. Let's do that. And we'll print to get a mode probably. Okay, yeah, let's do that. So I'll print something down here. Let's print. This is one new line. This is two new lines. So I'll print select text mode number. I'll just do that, and then it'll be right after there. And the user can put in something and we can print that. So we'll get a keystroke. So get number from user. And we'll print that out. Yes. Okay. So actually I do want this. Say get key info. So I'm just I'm gonna print what they did down here, I suppose. 
and then we'll redraw the screen and print all that again, maybe. I don't know. Let's do this. So this will be zero through percent D, which would be the max mode. Just so it looks a little bit better. Well, it should be max. I guess we'll see what finds out if we if we print it though. That's fine. <laughs> All right, print out C buff, and we'll just see. That'll print it, and then we can wait. So if they do a one, it should print a one, and then we want to set the text mode from that. Let me make sure this works right now, the one printing. I didn't save that. There we go. <laughs> okay, so select text mode zero to five. I put in an F, so it's not going to go on. Did not consider that. All right, I pressed one, it prints a one, okay. Let me print a space there. A zero would print a zero, but we'll do that. We'll take it and process it. So let's say if right now, we're testing the Unicode character right now. So say it's greater than or equal to zero. And this is not great. Well, right now, let's assume we only have 10, I guess, <laughs> text modes to choose from. So zero to nine. We'll try to set the mode that they did. We could switch on the character, I suppose, as well, but we'll just do that. So we'll say choose text mode. Else, let's say after this will break and redraw the screen. Else, let's say if they want to quit, we'll have something here. Escape would be scan code 17 is what it said. So let me do it on scan code as, as well. I'll say quit and shut down. I'll say shut down. Okay, so let's do this right now. Right now I'll just print shutting down and do like a an infant loop again. <laughs> So this isn't going to do anything, but I'll just print down. Yeah, I'll print that on the screen so we know if we hit escape, just to test that that works. Okay, but if they did this, we want to choose and redraw the screen, so let's do that. Copy my code here. So we have set text mode. Okay, so that'll be C out. Probably set text mode. No. I might not have set that up in here. Probably not. If I set, nope. Just go down here. It's probably set mode, not set text mode. No, why would they be consistent? Text set mode. So I just have to look at these characters. Okay. So set mode, C out, and we'll have the mode number. So the mode number would be a uint n. So we do have to convert our Unicode character, <laughs> which we entered in into a UNN in to be able to set that. So how do I do that? I'm assuming they're going to enter an ASCII. So the Unicode is going to be the same as the ASCII value for 0 to 127 at least. So we can do a simple thing like that. So mode number would be, you know, key dot Unicode character minus 0, right? Or really we could do minus that. That'd be the same thing, effectively. So if they did a 9, it'd be 9. I'm hoping this works like this. <laughs> but we'll see.
It should print out again, when we redraw the screen, it should print the current mode info. So we'll know if that worked regardless. We'll know if it worked visually, if it prints out the new mode info for the number that we chose. So I'll just subtract that to convert to an int and we'll set the number to do error handling. Okay, then we'll break out of the loop and go on else. Let's say they did this for shutting down. Okay, that seems to be all right. Okay, we'll do this. So if we do zero, I guess that would redraw. Let's try mode two. Okay, it doesn't print out that I did the two. I probably should try to do that. Save the mode number and print that out each time. That would look better, but it did change to a two. I'm going to do a 3 now, 128 by 40, and it keeps moving up because the screen it can draw at is bigger. And then 4, the maximum mode should take up the whole screen traditionally, so that does make sense. Going back to 0, it redraws at 0. Okay, and let's do escape. It says shutting down. So I know that stuff works, which is awesome. Usually my stuff never works sort of first try, so that's good. I'm going to put this on its own line as well. Big scary exclamation marks. Cool beans, okay. I'm glad this works. Um, so let me get the la maybe like last mode number set. Let me do that and we can print it out here maybe. Let me do that actually, yes. I'll do that here. So print out the max mode and we'll do like last mode. I'll do that here. Call it last mode or current mode. Current would make more sense, wouldn't it? But I'm gonna do this here. I'm gonna make it make it static. So I'll say current mode. Right now it'll be zero. Well, it'll be whatever it's set to, which is gonna be the current one, which is gonna be C out mode mode. Which I think is N32, not UNN, but that's fine. So it'll print it out each time. We'll have the current mode. They can choose one and it'll update on there because we'll set it each time down here. All right, nice. See if that works a little bit better. It doesn't, initializer element is not constant. See out mode mode. Initializer element. I don't want to do uint n. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Not constant, you say. So this has to be constant? That's kind of lame. I can't initialize it to that. Let's initialize it to zero. And then set it. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Yeah, that works the same. All right. All right, C. All right, so we start out at zero, that's right. And it says at the top anyway, if I put a one, I just wanna make sure that one, I'm pointing at the screen. I just wanna make sure that one stays there at the bottom. So two, three, four, five is not valid. It's just gonna redraw the screen. I should print like invalid mode for better UX, but it prints all that. And if I print, so it's, it's interesting we can choose one, which should be invalid because it has no columns or rows. Very interesting, but the processor is okay. Probably returns like an invalid status, but I'm not error handling right now. Let escape print shutting down. Okay. All right, what else do I want to do? It's been about an hour, that's all right. What else do I want to do here? I guess error handling, we can do that. We can do quit and shut down. I'll need, um, I believe I'll need runtime services. Let me... Let me check that though. It's probably under runtime services or miscellaneous. It's not under that. <laughs> runtime is in chapter eight. I think it's under misc. Reset system. That's what it would be under, I believe. Yes. So it's under there. Okay. So that involves runtime services. I don't want to do that right now. Let me do error handling first just so we can check some things. Maybe set up some macros, maybe not. Um, I have stuff at the top, right? Did not remember. Okay, EFI success.
So errors are defined as the top bit being set. So let me do this. Let's say high bit or top bit or something. Let's say top bits, and this is a 64-bit system I'm working with. So it's eight and uh, it's one byte, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the eight byte is set. And of course this, we could also do ULL if we want, but I think that handles it. So an error is defined as this being set. So the way I've done this before is kind of what EDK2 did. I probably copied from them, but we have like an encode error, <laughs> which kind of takes an error or takes a takes a thing and makes like the top bit set within it. So if we have a number, I mean we can do x x ord with top bit probably, and then you can define the errors from that. So if I go down in EFI land and the errors are at the bottom, status codes appendix D. You know these are okay. The error codes start at eight and all zeros up to nine and all Fs. So load error is a one, for example. Invalid parameter is two, unsupported is three, bad buffer is four, so on and so forth. So what if I want to check, like in reset, well, maybe not even reset, in set mode, that's what I was using, right? Let me go back to that. So output protocol, I'll go to set mode. So what do we have under here? We have success, we have device error, and we have unsupported. So we wanna check if we have a device error or if something is unsupported, we'll say. For an example for error handling here. So I wanna get a status of EFI status as the result of setting the current mode. So if we wanna check just if an error happened, we can make another macro, we'll say, EFI error, you may have seen that in GNU EFI or other libraries. This is not defined in the UEFI spec, which is unfortunate, although I think they mention it in one or more examples. <laughs> but this just stands for if this was an error code and the top bit is set, you know, process that stuff. So we'll want to make a macro or something that returns a Boolean for this. Um, we'll say handle error. And then you can like switch on the error code or, ch or check from there, right? So we can say if EFI status is um, whatever the devices were, device error or unsupported. And it shouldn't be anything other than those, but I'll just have these here anyway. I should probably make better either handler functions or macros for printing errors out. Like that would be, that would be handy. It's unsupported. Yeah, EFI unsupported. Mode number was not valid. That's probably, I think, what I'll get if I try to set an invalid one here. We'll find out. I want to try setting the first text mode that has a one that has like no columns or rows that might be valid i just want to see if we get anything from this if it's invalid or you can try sending like a 20 some number that's not even in the list right so what i can do is actually do this first say so current mode is this minus this yeah i can even change this condition here to be a little bit better if it's greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to the max, then we know we have a valid mode. That's a little bit better. We can do this if we have an error. All right, I'll just print out stuff right now. We do have a standard error that we can use from the system table. I might switch to doing that for errors. Right now, standard out is working as my standard error. We'll just say, right now I'll say error X, this will be the status code. Um, and device error, they define as device had an error, cannot complete the request. I'll just put like device error. We'll just say that all caps, so you know it's serious. <laughs> and we'll give EFI status, we'll print out the code. I won't do it like that then. 
Otherwise, we had a different error. Unsupported is mode number was not valid. Mode number was not valid. Okay. So we'll just see if that works. It might not. But we do need the macro for EFI error. Um, I guess that would be as this. Oh, I should surround these as well, right? Surround that with parentheses. Um, actually, no. Error would be... I think there was one way it was converting it twice, right? So we would do int n, or was it uint n? No, yeah. So we convert uint n x, <laughs> and then we see if that... Um, convert it, because I'm trying to think how EDK2 did it, and it was kind of slick. If we take our number, let's say it's a it's a successor error value, like 8,000, whatever, 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 and like 2, right? So it's, it's whatever error that was. If we want to check, it's actually an error, not a success or warning status or something. We want to check if the top bit is set, which means if this is a signed value, it's going to be negative, uh, which is fun. So what we can do is convert to a uint n, convert that to an int n, and see if it's negative. And that'll return a boolean, or you know, an int one or zero if it's true, or false. So not, it's uh, <laughs> it's kind of slick, I thought. But that'll determine if it's an error or not. So let's see, just from what I'm saying, if we have the max, like all f's or whatever, well, let's just see. So that's like eight, right? That's negative. So if we add this number with like a two on the end, which is not what I wanted to do, but anyway, it would be a negative, it'd be a, a big negative number. Seven, eight, yeah, it's a negative number, it's below zero. So that's all I'm trying to get at. That, ins that assures that if we do that, it's gonna be negative starting at this value. And if it's positive, we'll know it might be a warning or success. So, okay, we need to define some errors, though. So I'm going to do a couple of those here at the bottom, Appendix D. And I'm going to move this over again. So I want unsupported at least. And whatever else I defined in my .c file. So unsupported has a value of 3, so we can define that as coding the error for three, and that'll just do, I guess, three ord with this, right? Or we can probably reverse that to make more sense, a larger number. Top bit ord with whatever number that is. And that'll define eight, bunch of zeros, and three. EFI unsupported should equal that value. Okay. Otherwise we had, what, device error? If I remember right, yeah, EFI device error. And that is number seven. So there we go. That's this number here, EFI device error. And then we can go on and, you know, as we come across ones we want to define, we can define those similarly to these, I believe. Hopefully that works. If I can move this off. Did that. Um, B1. All right. So that should work here. That should have a boolean true or false, and we'll go through these. Will it work? No, it won't, because I can't do my job right. Comparison of unsigned expression is always true. I mean, that, that, I mean, that is true. That is true. I could make the mode an int. Would probably be better. Let's do that. Int n. There we go. <laughs> Expected identifier or left paren for equals because it probably needs to be something else. Oh, I don't have a thing here. Status. <laughs> Give a name to your variables, not just the type, and it'll work out a lot better for you. It'll work out a lot better for you. Could have done a substitute or find replace and not done that. So slowly, oh, there we go, okay. 
zero, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you figure set mode would be bad. Oh, but we're only checking if it's between zero and the max, so it probably doesn't come by and not work. And one works, apparently, which is really confusing to me. Um, okay, let's not do this at all. Let's do if error status, then we'll break. So if it wasn't an error, it would be a success and it would go on. I'm assuming. <laughs> Uh, let's do that. Yeah, if it's a status, an error, then we'll break. Otherwise, we'll try to set it. Yeah, okay, I'll see what that... I don't want to break, actually. If it's an error, we want to keep going and get the next key. This will break for shutting down eventually. Okay. All right, hopefully my logic is, is sound there. Um, three mode number is not valid. Hey, I mean, that prints out, that's good. Because I pressed Control-Alt-F, so F's not gonna be valid mode number. I should have it rewrite the last line and not scroll. Um, and not give me an error there. <laughs> oh, that was great, I just did a, a bad thing. I just kept pressing stuff in it and it did that. Cool, buggy. Love when stuff's buggy. It's always great. It might set weird modes and stuff. Hmm. I guess it will always be equal to zero. That's true. Uh, all right. You went in. I don't want to set some weird negative modes here. But we know that this stuff prints, which is nice. So we printed the selected mode. And then it'll print this stuff again. If we do R, it'll go back to the start. So this should probably be on, well, hmm. Try to think, if I just do an R, it'll go back to the start of the line. But then this has a new line with it. So I don't want to do that. I'd want to do it before then. And then we'd want to print all this out again. Let me put this back. So we'll print a line to select the text mode number. We'll get a number. We'll print out that value. If we print an error, we'll go to the start of the line, which will print this out again. But it'll probably show this text over here. So we probably want to blank out the line and then write it again. <laughs> So how many characters is like in this uh, 38 plus whatever's in here, which are going to be maybe more 38 and 29. So that's 67. I can print out 80 characters. Just blank out the line with 80 each time, which is not a great way of doing this, by the way. It's a terrible way of doing this, but I am not going to do that. Let's do... And this is a bad way of doing it as well, but I'll just print out a space. So we'll print out 80 spaces, clear the line, and then print over it. Otherwise we might have dangling characters. We can like print out select text mode and then we'll still have like the error text over here when you're entering stuff in to the left of it and it'll look jank. I don't want to do that. So we'll clear out, clear out the line first. Just 80 spaces, all right. And then it'll draw this Select text mode on top of it like that. Except I don't want it to keep going down and doing that stuff. So R should go to the start of the line. Is there a new line in here? Or it might print that because it's 80 by 25. If that goes over 80, then it would go down. Let's change this number. I'll just do, just to have less characters. Mode number is invalid.
which is interesting. This prints a new line, but this doesn't. And it doesn't break. So I'm wondering where that line is coming from. Oh, because it redraws the screen and then prints another one? That kind of sucks. I'm trying to figure out why it's so jank right now. Uh, maybe I don't need that new line. I did save it, yeah. Yeah, that's not... Oh, it's printing all the way over on the side. That's the issue. Hmm. It's interesting that it breaks. It breaks the uh, foreground and background colors. That's really interesting to me. I'll have to debug that, but we do have a thing to set the mode. I guess because 80 is um, it's a one versus zero based indexing, right? A line by default is 80 by 25 in this default text mode. So 80 characters would go to the end of the line and go down by one. So that's probably why. We want to do 79. Oh, that's probably why. And then it prints all the way the S over there. So maybe not. <laughs> Oh, I'm just trying to clear out this line. Oh, I need to start with an R. So it'll go to the start of the line and then redraw over it. I'm, I'm dumb. I'm just not thinking. I'm just not thinking. That's all I'm doing. It still goes to the bottom, man. Print 80, go to the start, print that, print that, go to the start, print 80, go to the start, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what's bad is I had it working to begin with earlier, and then I'm breaking it, and I'm just spending a bunch of time doing a bunch of nonsense. You know you know what the gist of it of this is, right? You can set a text mode, I just don't know how to do proper menuing systems, because I'm, I'm dumb. I wanted to print an error, and then go back to the start. You know, that's all I wanted to do. <laughs> and this goes back to the start regardless, so I don't have to do that. But that should. I just don't know why 2 goes all the way over and then does that. That's confusing to me. And printf doesn't like that. That's true, because ur doesn't work. That's true. Need a u, and then that can be in there. Well, just want to print one character there. Yeah, I don't know why it prints an extra line each time. It's probably something really obvious that I just can't see right now, because I'm, I'm dumb. I get that it prints all the mode infos, and then prints a line. But it prints a line when I'm doing this every time. And it's probably because of this. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just dejected right now. I don't know why it prints the screen black when I do that either. It's really weird. Oh, because I'm not clearing the screen and reprinting everything. If it sets it and it's successful, I'm doing this. Interesting. All right, let me handle this first. Else we get the mode. If it's an error, I want to print and do this again. If it's not an error, I want to break. So let's do that. Break a. Successfully set new text mode. Redraw screen. Okay. That's what I want to do. All right. So I press a 1, I want to reset to a 1, which is invalid, ah. But a 2 will set the screen, that's what I wanted to do. Of course, Control-Alt, whatever is bad. So 0 is valid, 1 is invalid, prints an error. 2 sets the screen. 
five is invalid, six is invalid. See, that's why I wanted to redraw the text because of that. That effect there. That's why I wanted to draw this stuff. But we shouldn't have to do that because this should go to the start anyway. But then it does that. So I, I just can't, I just can't win. This should only print one space, right? It shouldn't print multiple. Maybe that's the issue. It should only print one at a time. That's what I wanted. Except it prints the error and then stops. <laughs> so what I should do is print the error. <laughs> oh, and then get any keystroke. Get key before moving on. And then it'll reset. So this is bad. I want to like refactor to not do this crappy looking code. It's not great, but okay. The error will populate on the screen. You can press any key and it'll go on. Of course, you'll have to get a new key, which is not great. So maybe that's not the right way to do it, but <laughs> when we go on, it'll redraw, right? Maybe I'll do that first. I'll do that first. We'll get a key and then we'll print everything. But I do want to print this stuff. Never mind. I don't know what the issue is. Get rid of that. It'll go on immediately, which is not great. I guess I will get a key first. Current mode. Oh, and then it prints whatever the key I did is. Yeah. So let's not do that. We'll just say select a text mode. Select text mode number. We print the key that we entered. So I do want to do that first. Man, I, I hate my brain right now. It's not working at all. I apologize. <laughs> get a key, print the key. If it was bad, I want to get this and go on. So I'll probably just redraw it regardless. That would be easier. Yeah, that would be, that would be easier actually. Let me re-add that. We'll add a key after the error. So one will be an error. One again, we'll print a one, two, three. Yeah, because that just works better. But since we print the current mode first, we're printing two things, so I need to go backwards. And I think there are keys to go backwards, although I think this supports backspace as whatever a percent B or something. Uh, the spec says that, uh, I think under console, you see ANSI maybe under here. It supports some ANSI escape codes, I know that. And it says the scan codes here if you want to put those in. I believe it does support backspace though, we can try. So backspace should be, I think, slash B. So after it prints the mode, I want to overwrite that position. So I'll do B for backspace. But then that overwrites the thing with the space, so never mind. Uh, oh, there is a way to do this, but not overwrite with the space. And it is moving the cursor left. So there are ANSI escape codes. Let's see, can I do that for like arrow left? Is that a thing that exists? Left arrow? Zero, four. Oh, but it's different ones. You know what? There's move cursor left. There's set cursor position, right? So what we can do is set the cursor position and move it left, or we can emulate that by printing a space and then doing a backspace. But that would be what we currently have. Hmm. Oh my god, I hate text processing. I hate it. Oh! 
I don't like my life. All right. We can implement moving the cursor. Let's do that. Let's implement moving the cursor. Let's put this on the screen. Because I'm just out of it today and going to have to edit a bunch of this crap out because it's not fun to watch. I'm floundering here. So set cursor position is part of simple text output protocol. Right here. So let's put this in. EFI text set cursor position means I'll move all these up. And it's above output mode. Oh, four, nine. We have the column and row we want to set it to. And you might be wondering, how do we get that info to begin with? Well, it does start out at zero, zero. You can either keep track of it, or really the mode, current mode should contain the value for the current row and column, should. So simple text output mode down here is the cursor's column and row. It should contain the current column and row for the cursor. So we should be able to set the cursor position to its current value, you know, minus one after we do this. <laughs> Just so bass backwards, but I don't know what I'm doing right. So set cursor position, see out. We need the column and row. So we'll do column minus one and just the current row. Right, so that'll move it left by one. Overwrite the mode number and then we'll get a key. Ah, okay. All right, so zero, one, no, two, three, four, five, four. So it still says one error, well, which is correct. I'll probably move the error over by a space. If I press zero again, then it doesn't do it because we have to press a key first. All right, but that is kind of what I was wanting to do. If we have an error, I want to do a space probably after the character. So let's do that. Let's print a space first. Okay. So zero, whatever I entered in was wrong, right? So one is an error. It's invalid. Press a key. Zero is there. Two, three, four. Okay. That's kind of you know, the basics, it's kind of buggy, it's not great, but we got input, we have an event loop, whatever, to get an input event for getting a keystroke, we're processing a keystroke to some extent. I had a lot of floundering making a tiny sort of menu to choose the text mode, and we can do that and print at the new text mode. Um, on boot, we could set to choose the highest one instead of the default if you wanted. Maybe that's an exercise for the, the viewer, right? <laughs> but that's a basic thing there, so what do I want to go on from here and do? Um, we'll reset and shut down on the next one, I guess, because I'm gone for an hour and a half on my end, and i got to edit this down to not be so bad. So I'll do this on the next one. We'll make the runtime services table just a stub for it, like the boot services. I'll input the reset key thing so we can reset uh, the machine, and we'll go from there. <laughs> Past that, maybe I'll look into graphics modes, or we'll, I don't know, get some memory going, or try to load files from the the disk image that this is loaded in and try to load a kernel, but we'll, we'll go from there. I'll look at what I got on the docket, but hopefully this was somewhat educational or slightly entertaining at points. Hopefully my visuals aren't too degraded and I sound a little bit better. I tried to redo settings to use um, a different encoder and pick up less disk space so I can edit and upload things faster and hopefully sound a little bit better, <laughs> better meaning more legible. We'll see. I'll see how that works, but anyway, that's what I got here. I'll go ahead and push this to the repo so I remember to do it now, and, you know, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you on the next one, and cheers for evening, late night coffee.